is Sonia Gonzalez. I'm the architecture and archimedia forum director for the Open Group, and I have also been working uh, along with Bill in, in the harmonization project, which is looking to harmonize Toga and Archimede. And we have produced a series of white papers, so I'm going to make some questions to Bill, and we're going to have a, a chat about the project right now. Bill, please. Hey, my name is Bill Estrom, uh, president of Metaplexity Associates, and yeah, Sonia and I have been working together uh, for the past a little over two years, I think, to try and uh, make TOGAF and Archimede work better together as, uh, from a practitioner's point of view. And uh, now we've published our first set of results and uh, for phase one of the project. And so we'll talk about things related to uh, how well the standards work together in terms of their terminology, uh, the modeling views and viewpoints, as well as uh, the fundamental definition of the terms that are used and the, and the entities and their relationships. Okay. So the TOGOF and Archimate both are open group standards. They were, have been developing in different paths because they are addressing different needs and concerns. Uh, as a general approach, what would you suggest to final users to use the two of them successfully? Well, I think you have to use the Archimate language in order to describe your architectures and you do that as part of an overall enterprise architecture process. And so the TOGAF standards are designed to allow you to have a, a method that you can follow, as well as a framework for the content that you develop. And so I think uh, Archimate provides that content, and there, there needs to be some consistency uh, between the two. And again, as you pointed out, they were developed in different time frames by different people, so there are some natural differences that occur. But I think uh, largely those can be overcome uh, with some careful planning in terms of how you do the architecture modeling and how you set up your content framework. Okay. Both of them have different set of uh, concepts. And uh, like you said, TOGAF is a framework. So it's bigger, larger than Archimate. Archimate has fewer concepts. But some concepts are like similar. Some others have some differences. Uh, so for example, in this case, if you're trying to harmonize concepts and glossaries between TOGA and Archimate, do you think it's worth to take just the whole TOGA glossary since it's larger to the Archimate one, but just take some, some of the points, the touch points that both standards have? Well, I think from an architecture practice point of view, the more you can standardize your terminology in general, the better off you're going to be. The, the more consistency there is between the uh, practitioners, the less likely you're going to have confusion. But then when you get down to the specifics of developing architecture descriptions, uh, using consistent terminology uh, is important. So, yeah, one of the things that we've done in Project Harmony is to basically look at all of the glossaries, the terminology that's in the glossaries of both TOGAF and Archimate and see where they're the same and in places where they're different and then suggest alternatives that might be able to help people to develop a, a consistent glossary of terms for their own organization. I think that's the really important thing here is that each organization really needs to kind of figure that out for yes. themselves. Some organizations will really do a very good job of, of uh, and a very detailed implementation of TOGAF and they'll use Archimate in great detail. And others will be maybe a little bit less orthodox, a little, a little bit more casual. And so the degree of harmonization that they need that might be a little bit Less. I think you also have to look at the operating model of the company to understand uh, you know, the level of rigor that's needed in order to standardize uh, these terms so that you can integrate different parts of the organization and make them work together. Yeah, and also every organization has its own glossary. So at the end it's like my glossary and I try to harmonize that with both standards. At the end of the day is that because it's like what is really delivering value to my organization. On the other hand, we have the content meta model from, from TOGA, it is like we said, like a framework for making enterprise architecture. So where practitioners are making, are starting making enterprise architecture, they got into the content meta model and they have this issue, okay, how I'm going to fit this set of entities and relationships for actually delivering models and delivering architecture descriptions. And then on the other hand, we have Archimate meta model, which is different, even though some terms and some relationships are similar, they are different than the ones in TOGA. What kind of advice or approach would you deliver to find a user to overcome that? Well, I think, again, a lot of that depends on the organization and the level of maturity that they have. 
And I think it also depends a lot on the types of tooling that they're using to develop the models and the repositories that are using to store the content. So that there needs to be an agreement, uh, just like there needs to be a standardization of the glossaries of terms, there needs to be a standardization of the entities that are used to create the artifacts that you're using to describe the architecture. And then also the relationships between those entities. And so that's the stuff that we've been doing with with the Project Harmony is looking at those relationships uh, between the entities as well as the entities themselves and how they need to be similar. No, at the end of the, or they're related because you have to harmonize glossaries, then you come up with the content, with the uh, elements, the entities, and then you have to harmonize the relationship between them. So everything is related. And that comes to the, to the last question about viewpoints. I mean, in Toga, we have a set of viewpoints. Uh, some users say that it's too general, too high level. And also, Archimedes has a set of viewpoints which is larger than the one in Toga. And it's, it's like more focused because it's like a, a language notation, a modeling notation. But if we're going, we're trying to address stakeholder concerns, what would you do with this viewpoint? What would you touch that point? How would you solve that issue? I think first you have to figure out the equivalency. What kind of equivalency is there already between what Archimedes uses for viewpoints and what is re required in Togaf? Sometimes the names are different and they're really describing the same things and things like that. Other times, there's actually some semantic differences between what one, the, what the Archimedes language requires and what TOGAF provides or requires. So, and again, it, it all boils back to your organization's needs. So you may be able to just take the few viewpoints that you need and not worry about trying to make everything equivalent. So we'd like to see, uh, we'd like to see you be able to use Archimedes to describe pretty much any artifact or any of the TOGAF artifacts. But we're not, you know, I think it's really important to remember that what we're trying to do here is make these two standards work together, but we're not trying to integrate them together, you know, like weld them together so that they cannot be used with anything else. Yes. We want to see Archimede be useful for other other enterprise architecture frameworks and and uh, we want to see TOGAP be able to use other tools uh, like UML modeling tools and things like that. Yeah, and also regarding viewpoints, it will depend on what the, your stakeholder concerns also. There could be a specific viewpoints that could, could be a combination yeah. of several viewpoints. That's also always, important. yes. Yeah, that should always be the basis that you use for making decisions about yeah. the viewpoints. Yeah. So thank you very much, Will, for sharing your opinions with us. And uh, let's move forward with the second phase of the project. Okay, very thank exciting. you very much. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Sonia.